talking about the introduction of new advancements into practice. How do we change some of these processes and we try to get more aggressive, risk-informed decision-making? How can we lean ourselves out so that if, in fact, we're able to get better at delivering the program, then this is a ability to be able to come out in a couple of years as a much different Corps of Engineers, and hopefully then we can continue to keep some of those lessons learned and best practices in the Corps so that we can use them to our advantage. So we've got sensors now, very expensive, that can start to do these type of things. So think of that completely instrumentized soldier, an instrumentized cop car, a building, a drone, feeding into this smart connected installation and onward to a smart connected enterprise where we have this data driven censored army of the future. I have to share a little bit of a story here because you have an organization that runs on courage. I was sitting at Invent at NMU and there was a woman sitting in the parking lot for about 30 minutes before she walked in the door. And I said, what took you so long to come in? I was working up the courage blew my mind because I have never had a problem going into something and failing and executing and here is this stay-at-home mom who had a better mitten for an infant who is working up the courage to share her idea we can't operate in a society we can't change this country if it takes courage to do what and I think Tom said it innovation another word for that is common sense why do we require courage to operate with common sense? That's a tall order, revolutionize, right? <laughs> um, is, but uh, I think we have to have a vision of beyond where we're at. And um, in ERDAC and uh, the core, U.S. Corps of Engineers really helps us understand what the vision is and, and helps us understand how we can, we can play a meaningful role in that. Uh, we're very, very proud of our students, and, and there is within our students, there's a great work ethic to make their community and their state and their nation better, and our partnership really allows that to happen. So the biggest sentiment I have is I had, uh, I did not have an appreciation for the diversity of problems that are being solved. That's number one. So number one, there's a lot of big challenging problems, and it's they're not all necessarily directly connected with war fighting or military for example you know responding to floods and disasters i did not know that the u.s army corps of engineers works with that extensively so my takeaway is a there is a diverse set of challenging problems b there is a desire to to move faster and to innovate and c that they're very open to partnerships with private industry uh, and this is actually not very well understood in Silicon Valley, in my opinion, where I come from. Most people tend to go to commercial establishments for solutions. Uh, they don't look hard enough at uh, the needs of uh, the Department of Defense. And uh, I, I've certainly changed my outlook on that. Uh, the ability to sit and work both government and industry and academia together at the same table um, as part of an acquisition process is absolutely uh, critical, uh, particularly now that development cycles need to be shorter and shorter. And so uh, events like this make it, you get to see who is in your, uh, in your marketplace and uh, understand who to work with to make things happen. Because it doesn't matter if you have people who are willing to do the hard work of innovation to pour themselves into people telling them they're crazy. I said, you can be crazy as long as you're right. Was I right? I was right, okay? But you have to have someone willing to open the gates when you get there. And for the, those of you who raised your hand at the beginning, you core employees, you're the gatekeepers to paradise. And you have to remember to open the gates for the people who show up.